Morning, everyone. Mike on Monday coming to you. Uh, last week, I was part of a UW uh, meeting up in Brilliant that covered meeting tomorrow's feed challenge today. So from my perspective, a handful of things popped out. So in Northeast Wisconsin, we've got low feed inventories. Uh, of that, those inventories, we have less than ideal quality in some bunkers, bags, etc. And then how are we going to make up for the low inventories and qualities that we have going forward with this next growing season? So I see that we got to get back to some of the basics that I've preached about for a long time. Um, one of them being you got to have the nutritionist and the agronomist working together as part of your team to help solve the challenge that you're dealing with. So one of the pieces of the puzzle might be talking with your nutritionist on outsourcing some feedstuffs. Is there a way to, know, to stretch the inventories that you have? I'll make the assumption that you've worked with your nutritionist, that you've calculated inventories for the animal groups that you're trying to feed, as well as how far they're gonna go. Are there things that they can provide to you to help stretch that? Um, either through your nutritionist, maybe your agronomist, there might be some folks that are sitting on some inventories that they could potentially sell off to a neighbor to help that situation, again, trying to stretch feeds. Or do we look outside the area looking for additional feed? The challenge that you're faced with is you need to know which feed stuffs you need to bring to the farm. You don't have the luxury of just grabbing whatever's out there and asking the nutritionist to try and fit it in and still maintain condition, herd health, and production. I always include the nutritionist when possible to help with that decision as to will this particular product fit into the farm? Will it help out my situation? A possible different direction might be we change the, the herd number. This might get a little more complicated from the standpoint of uh, if, if working with the lender, letting them know that you might have to change numbers of animals that you have that you're feeding to try and by reducing the, the, the number and stretching the feedstuffs that you have. Again, that might be integrated into a loan scenario. So again, just don't automatically do it. You got to have these difficult conversations. You're running a business. This isn't easy and you get to make a lot of tough decisions, but that that's why we run businesses because we make a lot of decisions every day. Um, quality in some of the bunks, in the bags, wherever, might be compromised due to we didn't hit the right moisture when we put it away. Not necessarily your fault, could have been the weather, but end result is maybe I didn't get the right moisture when I put this away. So that complicated fermentation that allows maybe for some molds or clostridia or some of the other challenges of the feed. Are there things that you can be doing right now as you're pulling down the face to try and keep that situation under control. As we warm up, remember molds and other nasties start growing a little bit faster. One of the beauties of Clostridia is that it is slow growing. Again, working with your nutritionist on the timing of which you deface. Um, if you had some silage, haylage that you put away that was maybe in a frozen state, you know, how long will that last uh, as we start warming up, as it thaws out? Putting together a plan of, I've made some feed, I don't know how well it is, but getting that put together as a plan and using that inventory in a timely fashion to make sure it maintains as much of the quality as we possibly can at this point. So now let's take a quick look at Maybe the future. 
So we might have some compromised stands from the past year or two of um, didn't have the capital to manage it the way I wanted to, stands being alfalfa. Um, so maybe it didn't get the potash on there. Maybe I've got a lot of tracks through the field and bottom line is we want to have at least 50 stems per square foot to maximize yield out there. If it's below 40 stems per square foot, it's in a compromised state. We need to consider rotating to something that will produce more yield in that situation. And yes, your challenge might be, do I need the tons or do I need the quality? And the answer most of us will try to use is, well, I need both. Well, we may not always get both because as we try to get more quality, we tend to not get as many tons in the process. So have that tough decision ready or discussion about which one's more important to me at this time. Tons, quality. We know that if we let, for every day that we allow that alfalfa, as an example, to grow, uh, every extra day is about one in 150 pounds of dry matter so that can bring up some tons over a period of time. Um, it might be a case of where do I use a fungicide or not. We know a fungicide can improve yield but with dollars tight maybe it's just on that first crop maybe it's just on those high yielding fields that we feel are in good shape. So invest strongly in the in those strong fields and maybe we stretch our dollar on the fields that are already compromised. If we're, if we're looking for tons and the first thing that we have in our arsenal, again, back to basics, uh, is corn silage. Um, the challenge of when do you need this corn silage as well as how many tons you need. Uh, the thought of going to a shorter maturity might get us to that corn silage a little bit sooner, but we run the risk of compromising how much yield we get out of it. Basically, the shorter the maturity we utilize, we're chipping away at yield potential at the same time. Again, every farm is gonna be a little different, tough decisions going forward. If that hay is worthy at least of getting first crop out of it, grab it and then move maybe to a warm season crop it depending and that all depends on planting date so if the scenario is that it's early enough to plant corn corn still gives us the highest yield potential if the conditions are warm enough and we're running a little bit later then we might start shifting into a sorghum sorghum sedan as as options uh, again, both behind both of those, the other part of this equation is where is my manure inventory at this point? How soon do I have to get some manure out? And if so, do I need to come? I need to have a plan as to how to deal with that. So if it's I take a, a cutting of, of hay, put on a light application of manure that allows me to then uh, get a crop put back in. If it's still real early, maybe it's a, an oatledge crop that you put in or a triticale. We know how to grow small grains here in Northeast Wisconsin. Take advantage of that. that. That gets harvested in roughly 50 to 60 days. Another shot of light manure. Now maybe I'm in the middle to late June. I don't want to plant corn. It's a nice fit for the sorghum potentially. Again, lots of different options as we move into that. Um, your challenge is putting together different strategies and knowing what the availability of the products are that you want to consider planting. Remember last year we used up a lot, a lot of inventories across the US on warm season crops, small grains, low, uh, uh, short season, maturity corns. So those inventories aren't what they normally are. Be ready to have multiple changes to deal with that situation. Finally, 
I just want to say there's no silver bullet here. We got a lot of hard work ahead, putting your team together, strategizing, coming up with multiple ways to address the different situations that are going to pop up and having your team working together will create a lot of opportunities to get us through this tough situation. Hope some of these things help you out. Got any questions, reach out to us. A lot of the folks at Country Visions have been through challenging times before. We'll be going through them with you again. With that, enjoy the sunshine. We'll talk to you next week.